Good morning, viewers. This is a very important accusation that Nigerians must know about. The other time, the Commission of Police in Zamfara State said that uh, they arrested House of Assembly members and people who are bandits. And yesterday, the former Minister of Solid Mineral, Bia uh, came to Channel Television to admonish us that Tinumbu and his cabinet are bandits. He said this on Channel Television, a national television. And he went on to say that part of their banditry includes impoverishing Nigerians, suffering Nigerians, and making sure that Nigerians will continue to drop into poverty. Take a listen. Taking away from the petroleum sector, uh, your reaction to the statement of the presidency about the presidential jet, and those who argue uh, the safety, there was a safety problem. There was uh, the jet that has been replaced was since the Obasanjo uh, government, uh, the one that was purchased. In you, the mean, you mean Obasanjo's uh, new craft that uh, was uh, um, that is now 19 years old? Yeah. Because I mean, let's not speak in general terms. Yeah. No, so the, that craft is a 19-year-old craft, and it was a new craft. I think it was um, a B737 mm. craft. Okay. Now, in everything that we have heard, justifying the basis for a new craft, and by the way, I'm absolutely upset that these fellows would dare to play with the intelligence of the Nigerian public. Between the executive, the president, the presidency, the National Assembly, I think the they are decided that they are the bandits. They are the bandits. Ooh, the, the, all of them. The political class has decided that they are the bandits against the people of Nigeria. Because I do not see how it is feasible that the topmost priority of a government that has this level of biting hunger in the land, this level of poverty where its people are dropping into poverty per minute would consider the purchase of a befitting aircraft for the president we are already at a point in nigeria where everyone who is not on the side of the people who are impoverishing us i mean the side of the so-called political elite if you are not on their side it is time for you to tell us where you are. It is time for everybody to continue to speak for us to know where you belong to. So that when the rain comes, we know who we are going to use our umbrella to cover and the people we are going to pump more water on. Because as it stands now, the battle line has been drawn in Nigeria between the masses and the political elite. Because the political elite, they have taken it as a duty to punish the people. Their character shows that they have assumed the responsibility of making sure that Nigerians will continue to die without them making any effort according to the oath they swore when they assumed into office to protect lives and property. There is nothing absolutely working in Nigeria and this government is making sure that things will continue to be like this. The construction of a 20 billion Naira home for the vice president, the purchase of all kinds of funny looking cars and the fleet of the national assembly members and the executive what exactly is that and i speak with a lot of moral authority i served this country they want everything about what i earned they can find it in their folder as a minister i had they have something called uh, minister's impress or something vote my mom said Bokizawa will tell you until tomorrow that I did not touch a dime. So when people say the, all these things, like, were you not in government? I was in a sane government. I wasn't in a government that watches women screaming, Ebinkwawa, Ebinkwawa, we're hungry. We haven't eaten. People used to do zero, zero something or zero, one, zero, one. Today, families write and say, my children haven't eaten in the last three days because we just cannot afford the prices in the market. When inflation is at 40%, it erodes the poor. 
It literally, look, central banks exist to manage inflation. Can you blame the presidency? This is the explanation of the presidency. I am very the, upset. The, the recommendation, yes. according to Bayo Nanuga, it says, the recommendation to replace the B737 Who is, is a special advisor to the president on information and strategy. And he did, he wrote and said, a B737-700 BBJ followed, uh, the replacement followed, an investigative hearing by Nigeria's parliament that requires <laughs> that by question, Nigeria's parliament. Yeah, that My questions goodness, how the plain safety that record get? and cost efficiency, especially after it malfunctioned during a trip to Saudi Arabia. If you were president, Come wouldn't on. you get a befitting aircraft or would you fly a commercial aircraft? If I were president and I see my the people of my country in this state of affairs, and I would go out and buy a, an aircraft for myself. You got another thing coming, Shew. When you are a leader, you are first in the line to inconvenience yourself. That's what leadership is about. So we who, told you, who told you that leadership is about luxury? Who told you? You see, this version of political leadership in our country, I think Nigerians need to wisen up. There is nothing about leadership that gives an advantage over the people. The leader is the one who takes the cost so that the people can get the benefit. That's what leadership is. No. This bunch of people in the National Assembly, in the executive, in government houses, in the states, these are not political leaders. Until we get to the place where we're saying to ourselves, the greatest risk and danger to the sustainability and viability of Nigeria is the political class of this country. These are rascals by every definition of the word. Oh, and I am not mincing words about it because if you look at the choices that our political class are consistently making, you can see clearly that they don't care about the country. This country can go to ruin for as long as these people are able to feed the avarice, this appetite, unending appetite for just gnawing away at the public treasury they are fine but if citizens are fine with it so be it if we're not fine with it there is a class war that they have launched against the people and that war needs to be fought let me let me pause you for another moment you're saying this because you are not in power uh, those who are in the national assembly says they need vehicles to to run the show to be able to reach their constituency uh, the national assembly has said there is a safety problem with the aircraft of the president. You worked under a government that President Obasanjo bought a brand new aircraft. Why are you upset that this government is buying an aircraft that is so cheap and the price had gone so low and uh, that those who say, you, if sure you, you were don't. in government, I'm sure, I'm sure you, don't you probably would have done the way. same. Oh, please. <laughs> so that, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of beer palo talk that I don't have time for. Uh, because, you know, I mean, the, the case is very clear. Um, take, for example, uh, the matter of um, what, what ministers were earning when I was in government. In my own case, I actually, by going into government, I took a 90% cut, a cut of my salary compared to what I was earning as a staff of Harvard University. So this is nonsense talk. For anybody to say you were in government, who, who are you comparing with who in this country? On the matter of profligacy that we've seen in governance, please. Is this government you know, luxurious you know, in its approach? You know, Did you see anything that looks luxurious in the approach of this government to lifestyle? I think, and I think, I think you've now, you're telling me that you're going to ask me questions to infuriate me <laughs> so, no, that, I, so that I, I will get just, angry. Thank you very much for doing that. So the thing is, when your priorities are all going in the direction of things that do not add in any way to the productivity and competitiveness of the economy that you are responsible for, and your people are sliding more and more in poverty, especially your young are looking at their future and seeing it bleak, and all you're saying 
is I justify the fact that I need a new aircraft. I justify the fact that we really need the vehicles that uh, cannot stop on the road because we are senators and we are members of the House. Oh, I justify my being given a new brand, a brand new house uh, as vice president of the country. And you're justifying just nonsense investment. No, they are not even investments. Nonsense, nonsense waste of public resources. And you're telling me to debate that. There's nothing to debate. I can tell you clearly that there is a sell-by date for this kind of behavior. It can't sustain. We, we just don't have the bandwidth for it to sustain. Where are they going to? This is not going to sustain. Look, the kind of, um, the kind of uh, the, 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 uh, the divergence that exists right now where the political class think that they belong, you know, it's almost like we're running a fiefdom. So we've got this sense of the rare, all, all of the, the few of them that are in office are thinking of it as this is our empire and we give to the head of the empire whatever he wants. The president wants the toy of a new aircraft. So what do you think happens? The National Assembly pretends to itself and they even dare to say to us that they did some investigation. Well, what investigation did they do? Let them share it with us. What is wrong with transparency? And, and to think that you bought a 14 year or 15 year old craft that has your deterred recipient, user of the craft you bought. And you tell us this long story and then you go buy an Airbus there's something wrong with delusion. You know, this is delusional right. because it means that our political class, they are seeing themselves as being a, in a class that they don't belong to. I said it when we were in government to my colleagues. I would say to them, you know, we haven't produced the kind of a country that can compare with Singapore. If the Singaporean minister comes out and is saying certain things, he has every right or, every, uh, or she has every right to say it. But we, with the misery around us, okay. we can't indulge. So for people to indulge, no. Shew, yeah. please don't cut this kind of slack mm. for anybody. There's no. nothing in the expenditures that have happened. And by the way, the critical thing for this country is the restructuring of this country. The How truth is that... that happen? The, the, it, look, listen, with a credible, legitimate, transparent, honest set of actions, we can get the conversation toward restructuring <laughs> this country. And by the way, don't think that restructuring is a long-term objective. Oh, we have to finish running the economy. Part of the reason that they can mess up in the way they are doing is but because no, of yeah. the structure that they operate Doctor, with. as your question, I just have 60 seconds, literally, <laughs> literally. 60 seconds <laughs> yes. to go. Uh, there, there is going to be a, a, a possibility of a 10-year J term for those who refuse to sing <laughs> the national anthem. You had said you were not going to at some point at an event. I but it's been withdrawn now. No, no. I don't sing the... The, the, the new the, national anthem. No, 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 I don't believe in, the, in that. Um, I sing the national anthem that basically represents uh, the, the country based on the legitimacy process. Now... You, they did a national anthem in the covers of the night. Between the National Assembly and the president, they did not follow the constitutional procedure for changing an act. It's in the constitution. They did not. They, they basically negated all the provisions. Mm -hmm. And so as far as I am concerned, it's my personal choice. When we stand up to sing the national anthem, I sing, arise, O compatriots. Is it, is, is it compatriot-like if you're not abiding by the law? No, no, this is not. Family? This is an illegality. We are totally out of time. Uh, but if Kamala Harris becomes the first female president of the United States, he says something. Mm. We see Obiese Kwesili running for president again. You know, Obiese Kwesili is spending her time at training and raising a counter-political class to the rascality we see in our society today.